In 1869, players in the first football game used a round ball like in soccer. It was tough to carry and awkward to throw, so they changed it to look more like a watermelon. The current shape enables a better grip and passing on an arc that's unique to football. A lot of people handle a football before it ever gets to the field. They start with cowhide. Footballs are traditionally made of this leather because it wears well over time. With a dye, a worker cuts out the four sections that make up the ball's skin. A stamping machine then brands the skin with the company logo. They may put other markings elsewhere on the ball, depending on the design of the model they're making. Each of the sections goes into a machine that trims the piece's combined weight down to spec. To strengthen the skin, a seamstress sews cotton and vinyl linings onto all four sections. Then she places them in a die that positions them for another set of markings. These four white lines will form two stripes when the sections come together. This is purely aesthetic and varies according to the football model. Now it's time to sew the top sections together and then the bottom ones to each other. Exactly how many stitches this takes is part of this company's closely guarded playbook. This press makes a hole in one of the top sections for the air valve. They make eight holes in the top sections for laces that'll hold the skin tightly around an inflated bag called a bladder. To join the ball's top and bottom sections, the seamstress first cups them and then joins the edges together. She sews the leather inside out to make the stitches less visible. Later, workers will turn the skin right side out by reaching through the opening between the lace holes. This is also where they'll insert the bladder. It's important to flatten the four seams. To do this, a worker places each one on a wheel as a roller passes over the top. This keeps the ball from being bumpy when they stretch the skin over the bladder. A 15-second steam softens the leather and makes it easier to manipulate. A concave press flattens the seams at the tips. This will also keep the ball smooth when they inflate it. Time to turn the skin right side out. A worker places it on a metal bar, then reaching through the opening between the lace holes, he grabs the other side of the skin and pulls it through. Then he runs the bar along the inside to reshape the skin. The bladder is made of polyurethane, a type of plastic, with a vinyl patch reinforcing the lacing area. After squeezing the bladder inside the skin, a worker snips off the end of the air valve to keep it out of the way. Then she inflates the bladder a bit to make it rigid enough for lacing. After steadying the ball with clamps, she uses an awl to thread the lace through the holes. That's right, just one vinyl lace measuring 1.2 meters. It worms through both sides and then down the center and through all the holes once again. The lacing spaced a little more than a centimeter apart, wide enough to comfortably grip for that magic pass you've got in mind. Next, workers temporarily overinflate the balls. Steel molds surround them to ensure they assume the correct shape. After 90 seconds, the extra air seeps out. Finally, the factory inspects the balls to ensure they're up to standard. Fully inflated, a ball must weigh no more than 425 grams. It should measure 55 centimeters through the middle and 71 centimeters around both ends. After a five-day scrimmage through the factory, these balls are ready for kickoff.